Ladies and gentlemen, the Senate Intel already found in February, before the Mueller report was released, that found no obstruction and no collusion, that, um, let's read the Politico article, Senate Intelligence Chairman, no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. Senate Intelligence Chairman Richard Burr said Thursday, this is in February, that his committee's investigation has yet to find evidence of collusion between President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign and the Kremlin. Okay, they eventually ended their investigation prior to the report being released to William Barr. So nobody's found any foul play, wrongdoing, illicit behavior, uh, legal statutes being violated, unlike Clinton, who, oh, I don't know, uh, deleted 33,000 emails without government oversight, transferred, found an ingenious way to transfer top secret and special access program intelligence outside of the United States government, this is according to James Comey, and, oh, had 2,000-plus um, classified emails, top secret special access program intelligence emails on servers that were eventually open to the entire planet. And she didn't bother to tell President Obama. And President Obama says, oh, well, I didn't know, which, of course, he knew. So that is legal statutes, like James Comey stated, although there's evidence of violations of legal statutes. With the Mueller investigation, there was no evidence. There was not even potential violations, evidence leading to potential violations. There was nothing. Now we're finding out, my last segment, we're finding out that they got uh, warrants based on dossier, a dossier that was purchased by Clinton and a dossier the State Department and President Obama's Justice Department told um, the FBI, hey, don't use this. And they're like, okay, well, you're going to use this anyway. So they didn't tell the FISA judges. I mean, it was, the whole thing was a mess. It was an obvious setup. They found nothing. If you actually performed a legitimate investigation for a week with Clinton, bugged people's phones, uh, did all these things. You would find like a litany of crimes. But with, with Trump, it's like two years of an investigation. They found nothing. The media is being tipped and fed stories by corrupt FBI agents. James Baker is under criminal investigation. Andrew McCabe's under criminal investigation. He lied three times under oath with the intent to deceive. Now they want Trump Jr. to testify on apparent um, lack of candor or um, information they want regarding a legal venture, Trump Tower Moscow Project, a legal venture, not illegal. In fact, President Obama's administration, oh, I don't know, presided over a sale of 20% of U.S. uranium capacity as yellowcake uranium was shipped out of the country. And who, gee, who was FBI director? Name starts with an M, associated with the report. Oh, yeah, that guy. The honorable, the uh, saint, uh, the, the same guy that people now don't believe. The Mueller probe led to nothing. And that guy was in charge of the FBI, while Yellowcake Uranium, according to the New York Times, cash flowed to Clinton Foundation amid Russian uranium deal, while Yellowcake Uranium was shipped out of the country. And you had a bribery uh, scandal going on, a racketeering scandal on U.S. soil. Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin. There's an FBI informant. This is according to News, Newsweek and The Hill. Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin while it was all going down. Money flowed into, cash flowed into the Clinton Foundation from Uranium One. Gee, just a coincidence? Did that have anything to do with it? Gosh, maybe we should investigate for two years and have everyone around Clinton be wiretapped and surveilled and... Um, forced to testify under oath. No, no, no. They gave immunity to everybody. Brian Pagliano didn't show up for his subpoena, and that's no. He, he's the one who set up a server that allowed top-secret intelligence to be funneled out of the United States government. But of course, the first three years, the first three months of her emails are missing, and the first four years of his emails are miraculously missing. Meanwhile, Trump gave a team of zealots mil a million plus, a million point four documents and endless testimony. Now they want Trump Jr., and he might just be like, nah, sorry. 
Then he's like, then you get this um, Dem senator, Senator Richard Blumenthal, uh, on Thursday said, Donald Trump Jr., the president should go to jail if he doesn't comply. Yeah, right. Try enforcing that with William Barr's Justice Department. And you didn't, you did, how come Brian Pagliano wasn't sent to jail? Jason Chaffetz is like, he basically ripped up the subpoena in front of us. So yeah, that's not going to happen. There are no privileges for Donald Trump Jr. Uh, actually, there's, <laughs> I don't know who would have to testify about two events that were completely legal. There was zero, nothing, zilch, nada, nothing illegal or illicit or wrong regarding meeting with Natalia Veselinskaya, even if she had all of Clinton's deleted yoga emails. Because by the way, Clinton said she never deleted classified intelligence. The notion, first of all, Natalia Veselinskaya wasn't interviewed by Mueller. Neither was Joseph Mifsud. The two main contacts Trump was supposed to have with Russia were never interviewed by Mueller. When the FBI spoke to Joseph Mifsud in, in early 2017, before the Mueller probe, what took place was he denied ever having any dirt on Ma Madam Cyberhack. So their entire grandiose fantasy fizzled out even before they investigated the nonsense. Now they, they have a subpoena for uh, Trump Jr., and he should ignore everything. Let it go to the Supreme Court. If these are investigations based purely on politics and not without a predicate crime, if there's a crime committed, for example, tr the transfer of top-secret intelligence outside the United States government is a crime, that's a criminal act. The Clinton email scandal is about numerous criminal acts, destruction of classified data, all of these things. You want to talk about obstruction of justice, that's a textbook case. You want to talk about the Clinton Foundation, an overt, blatant, transparent, pay-for-play. Yeah, they don't accept the money into their pockets, fine. But they accept it through their charitable foundation. And you have hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And what? 85 donors gave $156 million. And then the rebuttal from, from Vox journalists was, oh my God, they, she met with more than 85 donors, 85 people. Well, that's not relevant. How is that a rebuttal? 85 people happened to give $156 million. Where is the record of, of the meetings? Why did they give that much money, 20 of whom gave over a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation? How is it that all of these people with completely different backgrounds and value systems and completely different, uh, one must assume, charitable um, goals, they don't all give to the same charities or philanthropic organizations. So you have countries and you have businesses and you have wealthy individuals all giving to the Clinton Foundation. Why? Why? Because they do such great work for humanity. Ask the people of Haiti. $10 billion stolen. But now, and I mean, all of this is like the backdrop here is that like Democrats are like, you know, social media has to prevent, you know, false news. It's like all of this is spun from the vantage point, from a Democratic Party operative vantage point. And then they say, any news that you hear is Russian propaganda. Well, I mean, if I get, if I, if you get a cell phone video of Bubba Bill having a romantic relationship with, oh, I don't know, a farm animal. Oh, how you doing, Betsy? Nah, sweet Betsy. It's, uh, I don't even want to get into it. And you, you're seeing this happen, and it's, like, horrifying. Is that the former president? Oh, my God. What is he doing? Oh, my. What? How is that even possible? Oh, this is abuse. The, ca the, the What? With a cow? In a barn? That's what I'm talking about. And you get this, this video... Instantly, it won't be the it won't be what you're seeing. <laughs> It'll be the Russians wanted you to see this. It's like, well, what about this? Is horrifying. No, it's not what you're. What it's not the knowledge and the the terrifying visual that will be 
implanted in your brain forever. It's the fact that the Russians did this. I mean, at that point, who cares who did what? Who, who cares who the messenger is? If you were given that video of Bubba Bill, it's you would th and then judge Bill Clinton on that behavior, which is basically I'm trying to allude to the DNC hack, which we don't know if that took place because CrowdStrike is the only company that said it took place. But there's no criminal act associated with what Trump Jr. He already testified. So now they're trying to get him on a process crime. Now they're trying to get him on, um, you know, oh, well, you know, he, he knew more than he told us about the Moscow Project. Who cares? He said he was only peripherally aware. He was more than peripherally aware. He was, you know, very much, uh, he had a, ver a lot of knowledge, according to Michael Cohen. Who cares? Michael Cohen's going to say anything. He was actually, uh, had a lawsuit with BuzzFeed. Trump Jr. told the Judiciary Committee that he never spoke to my father about it. This is the Trump Tower. This is, by the way, um, a Russian attorney with ties to the Russian government. Who? Yeah, they didn't even interview Natalia Veselnitskaya. Why is that? The Mueller report said the president edited his son's statement about the meeting. So what? Where's the evidence that he edited his son's statement? Okay. Do we have any evidence of that? The Mueller report said a lot of things without any evidence at all about the meeting. Through, through now former House Communications Director Hope Hicks. According to the report, the president told Hicks to say only that Trump Jr. took a brief meeting and it was about Russian adoption. Okay. Hicks texted Trump Jr. a revised statement. So, have they interviewed Hope Hicks? It's like, they're now just focusing, they're like stuck in the weeds now of this non... It's a non-crime. Nothing that they're investigating now is a criminal act. Meanwhile, uh, you did have a DNC fraud lawsuit that Jared Beck, Elizabeth Beck, and Nico House, and if you're on the left and you're watching this channel, God bless you. Thank you for still watching me, and subscribe to Nico House. He's awesome. His channel's going to be at 100,000 very soon. He's great. He's a friend of mine. He's fantastic. Um, subscribe to Nico House. He, Jared Beck, and Elizabeth Beck waged a lawsuit against the DNC because a criminal act took place because they told people that it was neutral and fair. And, oh, by the way, $200 million was given by idealistic, impressionable, and just, you know, good people who were Bernie Sanders supporters who wanted to support Bernie Sanders. You think that Bernie's going to bring this up? No. You think all the wonderful pundits who were like, Medicare for all, man, who are now like, this garbage disposal thing is really, this is Mitch McConnell's doing, AOC now is focused more on the garbage disposal that, you know, she found in her sink than, um, than uh, promoting a Medicare for All bill. And now it's all about climate change. Gee, what a safe issue that all Democrats can rally around. I thought you were going to abolish ICE. I thought you were going to implement a federal uh, $15 minimum wage. I thought you were going to um, push an actual bill to implement Medicare for All and have President Trump veto it so you could say to your voters, hey, we tried, but we have a Republican in the White House. So that was obvious deception. By the way, thank you to my new Patreons. Um, greatly, greatly appreciate your support. Deborah Erickson, thank you so very much. Thank you, Deborah Erickson. And... Um, just thank you so much to everyone. Uh, Michael Sheffield, thank you. And just thank you, everyone who... Thank you, Michael, very much. Thank you, everyone who support who is supporting me currently on Patreon. And um, Stephen Plunger, thank you. Thank you very much. So just thank you for all the, the recent support on Patreon. If you want to support my voice long-term, ladies and gentlemen, my Patreon link is below in the description section um, next to all my writing in the Federalist, the Jer Jerusalem Post, the Daily Caller, and also my other channel, HA2A, which is my firearms channel. So subscribe there. I'll, I'm going to be uploading some good stuff soon. 
Uh, but thank you to my Patreon, my new Patreons. Thank you. And to the people who are Patreons, thank you very, very much. Um, but there's no evidence of wrongdoing. There's no criminal act. So now what do they want to do? The Senate Intelligence Committee already, no evidence. They already found out in February they had an investigation. They had a parallel investigation with the House and the Mueller probe. They found nothing. The House found nothing. The Mueller, the Mueller investigation found nothing. So then what, what more do you want? He should absolutely ignore it. He should absolutely ignore it, Trump Jr. And, you know, let them, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, Trump Trump Jr. should be um, jailed, Senator Richard Blumenthal, yeah, of Connecticut. Yeah, right. Um, good luck with that. DOJ is not going to do anything because there's no crime that was committed. Now they're just trying to get him, trying to get him on... Um, See, right now they're they're now into criminalizing semantics. It's different when, for example, you ask Clinton, "Did you send or receive anything classified?" Then she says, "No," under oath. Then she says, "Then she says, well, no, nothing marked classified." So she changes that. So she's continually deceiving under oath. There's like a whole there. There, you know, you can go on YouTube. And there's endless testimony from Clinton under oath regarding, oh, I only used one device. She used multiple devices. I never sent or received anything classified. Uh, she had thousands of classified documents. So this was all, uh, you know, didn't break any rules. Of course, it broke State Department protocol. I think she even mentioned that the president knew. She, the president didn't know. I'm, I'm, she might not have mentioned that. Then you had people, like, shipping a laptop in the mail. Are you kidding me? Why don't you interview those people? The FBI already found that, that people they interviewed had lied. Reddit stoned here. He didn't, he didn't show up. I don't, did he show up for his... I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I know that Paul, uh, Brian Pagliano didn't. But it wasn't an investigation. This is the FBI. They made a point of, of, of trying to just ruin the lives of people associated with Trump. I mean, they tried every single thing to get people to flip and sing, but there was nothing there. With Clinton, do you think they, they, they did those things? Where, was the, where were the morning raids in the morning uh, these, these, you know, FBI, you know, morning, like, dun, you know, dun, 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 dun. they did it to my, Michael Cohen, they did it to Stone, they did a whole bunch of people, they put Manafort in solitary, it's like, you know, they set up and framed Michael Flynn, they set up and framed Papadopoulos, Cheryl Mills gets immunity, um, everyone around, Pagliano gets Im immunity, everyone around her gets immunity, they all knew how she set up her servers. And we found out there was an attempt documented that, is, that people they, they, uh, some foreign entity tried to infiltrate her server. And she endless, there was an endless stream of lies to the point where Attorney General Loretta Lynch met with Bill Clinton at, on a plane privately. And then they said they spoke about golf, Brexit, and grandchildren. Could you imagine William Barr meeting privately with Melania Trump? Or Trump Jr.? My God. I mean, if the tables were turned, it, could you imagine Trump Jr. purchasing a dossier, or Trump purchasing a dossier through a law firm? And then use, and then the FBI using that dossier to just start an investigation of Clinton, or the FBI using a, a, a the third party um, gossip, the just the hearsay of an ambassador saying that yeah, somebody associated with Clinton, one of her staffers, wanted to um, find Trump's taxes, and then they start, and, and it was a foreign country that wanted to do so, and they start an investigation. I mean, just flip the script. 
They would, you could, they would never debate me. Those people on the left who still believe in this nonsense, I would say, would you allow this? If, if Trump purchased a dossier, would you, would you think that was fair? That was justified? That was legal? Lawful? Would you, would you sit by as the FBI under President Trump investigated Clinton based on a dossier purchased by, oh, I don't know, you know Rand Paul? Or a, or a third-party tech firm, Trump Strike, looking at RNC servers and said, oh, well, this country hacked the servers to inform us that, you know, Trump was committing crimes, uh, you know, and it was all because they didn't like Clinton's foreign policy or Trump's foreign policy, and they wanted to help Clinton. Absolutely, he should ignore it. And honestly, if you don't, because the, the mindset is, well, if you ignore it, then they'll ignore their subpoenas. They already did. Brian Pagliano started this whole thing off. They, Jason Chaffetz wanted him to testify. He didn't. This, that's the guy who set up, along with Justin Cooper, the servers. And his four years of emails are missing at the State Department. And guess what? She's running again. And guess what? She's running again. And when she runs again, don't if you watch this channel, you better not be shocked or surprised or stunned. Because I'm telling you every single day. You think that she's going to what you think she's gonna hand out flyers for Biden? <laughs> the mad sniffer. Even Bill Clinton's making fun of Biden. And Bill Clinton's like, gosh, I really I can't really make fun of anyone. You know, I should probably just stay quiet, but he's comfortable making fun of Biden. Everyone is. And Biden's now at like 40% in the Democratic Party. They, they had zero intention of even get, getting anywhere near Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is running off the fumes of people like me who once supported him. Once he lost the, um, once he lost the vote of people who weren't outraged at every single sentence that might not be politically correct, but we'll vote for Clinton even though she has a litany of racist things that she's stated. Hillary Clinton, yes, referred to black youth as super predators and then even uh, referred to Mahatma Gandhi as a gas station attendant, both insidious things to say. And then she, what? She um, brought up uh, RFK while running against President Obama, the first African-American president or the first black president. Why would you bring up RFK? Is there something wrong with that that person's brain? Maybe. Why would you bring up RFK in 08 when you're running against the first black president? Only Hillary Clinton could get away with that. If if Trump was running against Obama and he brought he brought up RFK, you know why she did it because she didn't want to get out, she didn't want to when they were saying, oh, Bernie has to leave the race. Bernie has to leave, you know, and give her uh, his delegates. She didn't want to give Obama her delegates. She wanted to continue. And she brought up that horrendous, like, horrific event in U.S. history. And now we have all the people who pontificate and preach. And all the people who judge, who live to judge. And if you live to judge, um, not only are you immoral... But um, it's just you have zero vantage point to to try to and hurt others because if you live to judge and then you just become a hypocrite instantly when Clinton runs, when she's said and done worse worse than Trump, both in terms of rhetoric and deed, on not just social issues, foreign policy, everything. Not only, you're just a hypocrite. And that's what's going to take place. Clinton running uh, will vindicate everything I've been saying for so long. But anyway, she's going to run. Um, Trump Jr., shouldn't, it, there should be a showdown. And they should be forced, the Supreme Court or somebody should force Democratic senators to explain what crime Trump possibly committed, Trump Jr. What did he, what crime did he commit? 
He, he, he made knowingly false statements, could be subjected to five years in prison. And you don't then, uh, you don't go after Comey for stating that it was a unanimous decision, even though it's categorically false. Categorically false. You don't go after Clapper and Brennan, who committed perjury. It's not even about the NSA and about the, you know, uh, spying on the Senate. But Comey said uh, he didn't uh, exonerate Clinton until her interview. That was categorically false. He wrote the exoneration letter before 17 witnesses, including Clinton, was was interviewed. Then he was like, oh, well, you know, as a top FBI official, um, we know, we know where we're heading. It's like, yeah, right. That's not, that wouldn't hold up. His, his deputy director is under criminal investigation for lying three times with intent to deceive under oath, and he hasn't been indicted yet. He will be eventually. Comey also leaked classified memos. Four of the seven were classified. That's according to Chuck Grassley on his own website, Senate.gov website. James Baker and Lisa Page wanted to indict Clinton. It was not unanimous. He stated under oath it was unanimous. So we can go on forever. You're going to go after Trump Jr. now because uh, he made materially false or fraudulent statements. Blumenthal, I was in the room and my clear impression was that his answers were deliberately misleading and false. Regarding what criminal act? Just asking. He said he was only peripherally aware of the negotiations in Moscow for Trump Tower uh, there when apparently he was briefed extensively. Oh my God! You mean to tell me being peripherally aware um, can't correlate with being briefed? You added that, you added the description extensively, Blumenthal. Oh my God, you mean this is just like I did not send or receive anything marked classified or anything classified that Clinton said under oath, which was categorically false. I mean, my God. <sighs> Definitely check out my writing in the Federalist below. I'm telling you, subscribe to Nick DiPaolo. He is fantastic. He's an amazing comedian. His link is below and he's awesome. Subscribe to Nick DiPaolo also. He's, he's just fantastic. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very, very much. I will be back with another one a little later. Thank you.